by the end of this lesson, you should know these key terms here and people. Okay. If you don't, uh, come back and watch the video again. Take a screenshot now if you'd like. All right. So we're going to start talking about cells. In order to talk about cells, we have to talk about the beginning of early microscopes and people who looked at cells. All right. So Robert Hooke uh, was a scientist way back in the 1600s, 1700s. Uh, who was the first person to discover a cell. And uh, this is a picture here of Robert Hooke. Uh, he really doesn't look like that happy of a guy. Uh, I'm sure if he was in Mr. Toad's biology class, he'd be much happier. right? So Robert Hooke was the first person to discover a cell. Uh, and he first found cells by looking at a piece of cork. Okay, uh, And cork, like we've ever seen at the top of uh, like a wine bottle or like any type of bottle has a cork on the top. Um, it's actually dead plant material. Uh, and if you look at it under a microscope, it looks at all like little boxes and compartments like this, which is actually the cell walls that were left over from the plant. Okay, And uh, he came up with the term cell by describing each one of these little pieces of cork as a cell. Uh, and that name stuck throughout the next couple hundred years as people started to look at cells. Okay, um, so after Robert Hooke first discovered his cells, microscopes and technology started to advance around the 1700s, 1800s. And we have this guy called Anton von Leeuwenhoek, uh, who was a German scientist, who discovered organisms found inside of people's mouths. So he took little swabs, put it inside people's mouths, looked under a microscope, and he drew what he saw. And he saw all these little things like this, and little guys swimming around in dotted lines, and these guys, and these guys. And what he was actually looking at was bacteria. So he was the first person to look at bacteria. Uh, and again, he, did, he used this term that Robert Hooke uh, first used called the cell to describe uh, what he was seeing under a microscope. So after hundreds of years of research and people starting to look through microscopes at living organisms and studying cells, right, we started, to, uh, all these scientists started to discover new things about cells. And they created what is called the cell theory, which is a fundamental concept of biology, all right? All biology really, as you break it down, all different types of life, is based around the cell theory. And the cell theory states three things. The first is that all living things are made up of cells, right? And this is one of the characteristics of life we talked about in the beginning of the year, okay? Uh, all living things, whether it's one tiny, tiny little bacteria up to a giant blue whale, right? They're all made up of cells. Cells are the units that make them up. The second thing the cell theory states is that cells are the basic units of structure and function in living things, right? Structure and function are your key terms here. Um, all the different types of things that our bodies do, whether it's creating enzymes or sending nerve impulses or making muscle contractions, right? There are cells that have specific structure and function to do those things, okay? And we can use that, as, as we said, as an example of muscles, nerves digestion, all those have special types of cells. And the third part of the cell theory, right here, here we see a picture. Um, we have cells that form all different types. We have pancreatic cells, blood cells, cardiac cells, nerve cells. Finally, the third aspect of the cell theory is that new cells are produced from already existing cells, right? I can't take a bunch of lipids and some enzymes and throw them together and create a new cell, right? A cell has to be made from a pre-existing one. Um, and we do this through a process called mitosis, right? Cell division. We have one cell here, uh, which is eventually going to replicate, goes through the process, metaphase, anaphase, telophase, and interphase, right? Where we now have two separate cells. All right, so this is the cell theory of these three things. Uh, and this really governs biology because, like we said, the first thing, First aspect of cell theory, all living things are made up of cells. So whether you're studying life on a huge basis or on a molecular basis, it all applies to the cell theory. Um, and in order to talk about the cell theory, we need to learn how to use a microscope. Right now, hopefully we've all seen a microscope before. Remember, we've, maybe we've never played with one. Um, but this is what's called a light compound microscope. Okay, This is the microscope that you'll usually see in a lab and we'll get to use. Okay, And in order to look at things, it uses light. Okay. Um, when we look at cells under a light microscope, we need to use what's called a cell stain. All right. If we were to look at cells normally, uh, whether it's bacteria uh, or just cells from your body, right, 
normally they really won't have much color, be kind of transparent, and in order to make it easier, right, we need to stain them. If you've ever heard, gotten a stain on your shirt, right, after you're eating sloppily in the calf, you notice it sticks that different color, okay? Uh, and we can do cell staining, right? So these are nerve cells right here, and they don't naturally look blue and pink, right, down here. What we did was we stained them with different dyes to make it easier to see. So we could do that with different colors. This is also what's called fluorescent staining over here, where we can stain bacteria uh, with a special dye that makes it glow in the dark, which is pretty cool. All right, so in order to use a light microscope, not all the time, but it makes it much easier if we stain cells in order to see them. Okay, we also have a different type of microscope called electron microscopes. And electron microscopes are different than light microscopes because they don't use actual visible light. They use actual electrons, right? So if we remember about, we talked about the atom, right? The tiny, tiny, tiny little negative particles that fly around. And an electron microscope works by actually shooting electrons uh, at the images that we're going to be looking at, okay? Uh, this is not your everyday microscope that you get in the lab. These are super expensive, super easy to break. Really only uh, scientists who are really doing cool research can use them. Okay, and we have two types of electron microscopes. The first one is a transmission electron microscope. And the way this works is you take a little cell or a protein or something like that that you want to look at that's tiny, tiny, tiny. You can't see it under a light microscope because it's too small. And you shoot these electrons under there uh, and you get an image, right? So transmission produ produces two-dimensional, right, or 2D images that are kind of flat. Okay, but still you can look at things and you can see different proteins, different chemical structures. The other type of electron microscope is what's called a scanning electron microscope, right? And a scanning microscope, electron microscope works similar to like a scanner if you ever scanned a document, right? It shoots these, again, really tiny electrons, right? Uh, and scans the surface of something that you're putting on there. Uh, and scanning is cool because it provides three-dimensional images, and they're really, really super detailed, right? We could see all the little details of all these little bacteria, uh, or whatever these guys here that they scanned, right? So scanning is 3D, super detailed. Transmission gives us a two-dimensional, but looks deeper into something. Cool. Finally, to end up talking about cells, we need to talk about the two types of cells, right? So the two major types of cells are eukaryotes and prokaryotes. And hopefully we've all talked about this before, right? A eukaryote is a cell that has a nucleus, okay? And a prokaryote does not have a nucleus, right? Best way to remember this, euk has a nuke, pro means no, okay? Uh, and in so the nucleus, right, is actually the center of a cell. It has its own membrane. That contains the DNA, all right? And like we said before when we talked about characteristics of life, DNA are like the roadmaps to create life, right? They have all the information for making proteins and enzymes and chemicals and structures that can allow you to survive, all right? So in the eukaryotes, right, they're usually a little bit bigger. They have a nucleus, so if you see a big ball here with a membrane in the middle, um, that's the nucleus that has the DNA, okay? We usually we have two types of eukaryotic cells animals cells and plant cells and we can also have other things like protists that are eukaryotes okay the prokaryotes right usually like we said they do not have a nucleus and that's usually things like bacteria right we see this little guy if we notice though the eukaryotes are also much more complex they have a lot of organelles in their cytoplasm for the bacteria the prokaryotes really pretty simple okay um, that's it for today so go back, review your terms, uh, make sure you know them, and be ready for the quiz tomorrow.